Hi coaches, it's Whitney from Get the Pancake and today I wanted to talk about the video that I put out yesterday. So yesterday I put out a video talking about coaching resources that I used from getthepancake.com and I will include a link so you can go back and watch it if you haven't already. I was so excited yesterday. I'm starting with a local rec center and as far as I can tell volleyball isn't as popular as I think it should be. So I'm excited to try and help grow the program through all of my past experiences. And so I was really excited yesterday. I was extra prepared for my clinics that I was going to be running. It was beginner volleyball with fifth and sixth graders and then like intermediate volleyball with seventh and eighth graders. And so I just wanted to tell you guys how it went. No one showed up. <laughs> okay, one girl showed up. And the reason that I want to tell you this, well, there's two reasons. One, always have a backup plan. So I didn't necessarily prepare to have one player show up. I was thinking more along the lines of maybe six or eight. But fortunately, I've ran a lot of private lessons in the past. So having one player, I was able to just essentially do a private lesson with her instead of the clinic that she was expecting, which... Side note, if you're interested in learning how to run private lessons, I'll include a link in the description and tell you how to do it yourself. Okay, so the second thing that I wanted to tell you besides be prepared for anything is if you are starting a new program, make sure you market the heck out of it. Now, I just started in this role. The clinics were added a little bit later than usual, so they didn't have the typical marketing timeline that they usually have. And I'm assuming you guys know how big organizations like that work. Marketing is restricted to one person and you just kind of have to rely on them to get everything prepared and put out. So if you don't have social media, for example, in your organization, last minute additions to your schedule are going to be tough to promote because you're going to have to rely on email lists which have very low open rates and and then also just word of mouth and flyers in my past experience those help but social media i think is a great way to reach a larger audience especially with last minute additions to your calendar so anyway one girl showed up and i got to work with her for an hour and it was so much fun as I mentioned, I love running private lessons just because you get to work one-on-one -on -one with a player and see them progress over the course of an hour. And I don't know about you guys, but every time I've been coaching, I always feel pressure to have the player perform immediately, especially in private lessons when parents are paying private lesson rates. There's a lot of pressure for them to perform like right away. Like you're supposed to just say something and then all of a sudden they can jump serve. But you as the coach know that's not gonna happen. And you need to be able to identify the steps to get them closer to playing, have patience while they're learning, and also engage with the parents or the family, whoever is there with the child, talk to them about the process. So many coaches are afraid of talking to parents. They're just there, they want their kid to get better, and they know that you can help them better than they can. That's why they are signed up for your clinic or camp or team or lesson. So just go and talk to them and let them know how you think the progress is going. If you think it's gonna take a couple of lessons before Sally gets her serve over the net, just say it. It's okay, it's a process. Especially this player that I was working with last night, fourth grade, we were working on overhand serving and she did get a couple over from the 10 foot line. We're, we're nowhere near the end line. But we're working on the mechanics and she got a couple over and she was so excited and she was running off the court to give her mom a high five let that happen. That's so cute. I loved it. Um, let them do that. That's fine. It doesn't really interrupt anything, especially if it's a private lesson. Get the families involved. They're there for the kids too. But you have to break it down step by step. Just focus on one thing at a time. Don't overload your players, especially young kids, maybe even like up until maybe junior level in high school, a lot of players, maybe not the more elite athletes, but most players will have trouble putting together a couple of pieces of information and maintaining that throughout a whole practice. Let's say that we're trying to correct somebody's approach footwork. That might take a couple of practices on its own. So don't worry about what's going on up here with the hands, with where the ball's going. Just focus on the feet one step at a time. That's all we've got to focus on. 
be patient. They will get it. If you try and throw too much at them, they'll start to get frustrated and confused. This is where you really need to be paying attention to your players. If you start to notice them shutting down or looking down or just having like a scared face, that means you're probably giving them too much information and just slow it down and give them a high five, clap for them, cheer, say woohoo. So for example, last night, I was like, I don't care where the ball goes as long as you're stepping with your left foot as you're making contact with your serve. This was player was stepping with her right foot as many young players tend to do. But I told her, as long as you're stepping with your left foot, I'm happy. And as soon as we got that pattern down, then it was time to work on the toss. And you also have to see that each player is individual. So some players might need to work on their toss before their footwork. And then some, like this girl, I think needed to work on her footwork before she could focus on her toss. You get the pleasure of deciding what is going to work for that player and in what sequence. There are plenty of coaches who will tell you there's only one way to teach each skill, but I don't believe that at all. I think it's individual to each person, individual to their level, their personality, what their goals are. This girl was serving over the net, but she was contacting way behind her head. It was one of those rainbow serves. And ultimately that's not what we want her to do, but it worked for now. She was happy and excited and she was excited to come back next week which is when we're gonna work on making it more of a laser than a rainbow. Anyway, I'm kind of digging this whole coaching vlog idea versus uh, highly produced videos. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really interested to hear your feedback. For the time being, I think this is a format I'm gonna stick with right now, especially because there is just so much more to do with Get the Pancake at the moment. And before I let you go, I wanted to point out this beautiful t-shirt that I have on. So let me still show you the whole Thing. Okay, so uh, this is available on getthepancake.com. I just released it, I think a week ago, and I love it. It's super comfortable, so it is a tri-blend and it's charcoal, so you can't really see it. It probably looks more black on camera, but it's like rainbow colors, fun colors, and when I'm getting ready for volleyball practice, I always wanna have fun shirts to wear, especially to camps and clinics, and so that's what I had in mind when I designed this t-shirt, was making something that I would wanna wear to camp that would be fun, show that I love volleyball, but maybe wasn't too silly. <laughs> So anyway, I'll have a link to the t-shirt. It also comes in a really pretty blue color. Go and check it out. It's in the shop on getthepancake.com. And keep these three things in mind. One, what was my first one? Always have a backup plan, especially when it comes to number of attendees, whether that's your club team's practice, a camp for your high school. You may think you know how many people are gonna show up, but you never actually know until you see everyone walk through the doors. So one, have a backup plan. Two, market the heck out of your programs. That's gonna be coordinating with your marketing director and administrators. I highly recommend that you try and get social media as long as there's someone who is going to be consistent and responsible with that responsibility. There are a lot of things that could go wrong with social media and I think that's why a lot of organizations are hesitant to get into social media, but the benefits of promoting your product for free to people based on their location and through hashtags, it's so easy once you get the hang of it or if you have someone who is specialized and has been trained on how to properly use social media, that could be so great for your program and your numbers could literally explode. And the last thing is to be patient. Your players don't have to be perfect Coming in on the first day, parents might expect it, so go and talk to the parents. Make sure you level out those expectations, but just trust that over time, the players will get everything figured out. It doesn't have to be beautiful, even the first couple weeks of trying out a skill. Passing, for example, that takes years to develop a solid passing platform and awareness on the court. It's not all gonna happen in one day, so don't get frustrated identify at the individual level how you can best help that player and give them one bit of information at a time. That way they improve at a pace that makes sense for them. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to go and check out the shirt and subscribe to Get the Pancake here on YouTube. All right, thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.